oh my god, dude, they're everywhere. These NFT guys, these bros. Oh, they keep asking me to invest in. I'm interested, but also there's so many options. Oh, I'm so stressed out, dude. I'm so stressed out. You want to talk about stress? You want to talk about stress? I stumbled upon a major discovery, Rory. How about that for stress? What the hell are you talking about? Not only are they everywhere, but they're causing irreversible damage to the environment, Rory, and I got a paper trail to prove it. Check this out. Take a look at this. What the hell, Za? Let's talk about the environmental dangers of Okay, NFT. okay, hey. Okay, so we both know what NFTs are. Yeah, it's like something to do with crypto, right? Yeah, and it's also a huge way for artists to get paid for their work. Malaysian artists like Katton and Red Hong Yi have also sold a bunch of NFT pieces and it would have been harder for artists to sell their work otherwise. Because who buys art anymore, right? Yeah, sure, I guess. But here's the kicker. The what? So there are people who are opposed to the NFT. Like they say that NFTs are damaging to the environment, for example. Okay, but what does that mean? NFTs stand for non-fungible token. But in order to understand what non-fungible token is, you gotta first understand what fungible token is. Oh boy. Think of it like this. NFT is kind of like a one-of-a-kind item that you can't get anywhere else. And in order to get this, you gotta have Ethereum, a type of cryptocurrency. So you can use Ethereum to get NFTs, and you can have this one-of-a-kind item for as long as you want, or you know, until you sell it off, I guess. But instead of an item that you can hold, they're just digital pixels in your computer screen. So they can be like art, music, tweets, whatever. Okay, okay, Za. So I'm gonna have to stop you right there. Here's why I haven't invested in NFTs yet. People can still save a JPEG or, you know, download a video or watch the video or listen to the music, regardless if I own the NFT or not. So what's, what's the point of owning the NFT if people can still have access to it? That's what I can't wrap my head around either. But luckily we have Henry with us, huh? Huh? Who? Henry, he's the guy who tipped me off about NFTs. Henry? Who the hell's Henry? You don't see the... Oh shit. Where... Oh my god, you've lost your mind. You've lost your goddamn mind, Zah! People make the argument that you can get printed copies of the Da Vinci, but only one owner gets the original. But the original is an actual painting, a real life object that you can own and have. Digital ones are kind of silly. But some artists like Red Hong Yi would also send the winning bidder the actual art piece. So it depends on the artist and the art you buy, really. Why is this silver rabbit on exchange on, on display in this art museum worth like $10 million? Uh, it is kind of up to interpretation. I mean, the art world is a little nutty, right? So you look at it and you're like, why is that weird painting worth this amount of money? So it's based on whatever someone's willing to pay for it. And the NFT market is basically a new kind of asset class, which asset classes don't really appear you know, every other day. So it's a new asset class, which is digital artwork, okay, a digitized version of the artwork. And because it's new, um, there are people who are speculating what this new art form, what this new asset class is going to be worth. And it's very similar to buying a Mona Lisa or a Monet or any kind of other unique uh, artwork. Wait, where did he come from? Oh, you see shots too? Great, 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 great. <laughs> okay, Shaz. So what's so great about NFTs? What's the appeal? Some of it could actually be a flex. Like, um, there's a video of LeBron James dunking over someone. I can't remember who it is. Uh, it's like a sports highlight and somebody bought it for 200,000 US dollars and he puts it on his Twitter. I'm the guy who owns that, that highlight, that sports highlight. Um, so it's a flex. It is something that you show that I own this particular digital art and it's unique. Only you have it. People can make copies of it, but when people want to verify who's the actual owner, they got to go back to the blockchain and then they'll see, oh, this is owned by this wallet, which is controlled by you. Okay, but that's only just the appeal of NFTs for investors. Um, it is a lot harder for like struggling artists to get by with NFTs, for example. With NFTs, art has become a lot more popular and more accessible. And it's more opportunities given than if artists were to sell them traditionally. Even the art world on the whole has been pretty welcoming to NFTs. 
I mean, sure, it is a huge positive. But there are also artists who might not be aware that people can also take their work and sell it as NFTs themselves. There's a super dangerous lawless cowboy vibe to that, but apparently it's super easy to do that. Artist Kendra Ahimsa posted on their Instagram saying that someone has been ripping off their art style as NFTs. One piece of work was even sold for more than 80,000 US dollars. And it's not just stolen work that people are concerned about when it comes to NFTs. Oh, the environmental. The environmental impact of NFTs. Most people use Ethereum to buy NFTs. Ethereum is a type of cryptocurrency. And like most cryptocurrencies, they have this thing called proof of work. What's proof of work? Um, uh, Shaz, you wanna help me out, buddy? In order for you to prove that you have done something, um, there's a certain amount of work that needs to be produced. Now, in a physical term, I always use Bitcoin as an example because it's easier to understand. Um, if you were to have a, 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 what do you call it, a, a nugget of gold, right? Or a bar of gold. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So how would you get this bar of gold? This bar of gold basically is proof that you have gone to mine it. You have gone to refine it. You have melted it into a shape. And therefore, I can have this bar of gold. So all of that work is into this bar of gold and there's no way that you can get this bar of gold without doing all of that work. So all of this bar of gold is basically proof that you did all of that work. So that's what proof of work actually means. So it's similar in Bitcoin, for example, there is no way that you can actually solve a block without um, doing the, uh, without maintaining the network via mining. In order to keep these financial records secure, Ethereum uses complex puzzles so that machines can solve it if they want to have that piece of crypto. Solving these puzzles lets users or miners add a new block of verified transactions to a decentralized ledger called the blockchain. This process takes a gigantic amount of energy and it's like that on purpose. The idea is that using all this energy and consequently paying for the energy makes it less profitable for someone to mess up the ledger. Do you know how much energy it takes for one transaction, Rory? 48.14 kilowatt hours of energy. Do you know how much that is? One transaction creates as much power as a conventional household for like a day and a half. Rory, and that's just one tiny little baby transaction. The Ethereum blockchain generates thousands of transactions every day. Every day! For one year, Ethereum as a whole takes up as much electricity as powering the whole of Libya. Rory, that's an entire country! Yeah, I know what Libya is. A lot of times when you look at the um, the news in Malaysia, right, there are a lot of these stores and shop lots that steal electricity and all their mining equipment has been confiscated. And that's because it's a factor, right? If you use a hundred ringgit in electricity, using your hash rate, you produce 80 ringgit worth of Bitcoin. That means your mining operation is not profitable. But if you're using free electricity and you're getting 80 ringgit worth of Bitcoin, then your mining, uh, mining facility is profitable. So that's kind of what you need to look at. So to say how much does it cost to create one Ethereum or one Bitcoin, it's kind of hard to say. Um, but for Bitcoin at least, I'm pretty sure it's in the tens of millions uh, to create one Bitcoin, possibly even more. Uh, because there's a lot of machines worldwide that are competing to solve that block. This in turn would mean that NFTs need an insane amount of energy and that can really be damaging to the environment, depending on how a country generates electricity. Yeah, okay, I, I get that, you know, but what about the big dogs, you know, the ones that are actually doing real environmental damage? Like, wasn't that whole thing uh, where we were like trying to figure out our own carbon footprint, wasn't that something that was pushed by BP to distract from the real polluters, you know, the, the oil, oil companies? Look, no one thing is responsible for global warming as a whole. Okay, okay, first things first. How long did you spend sticking your crackpot papers to the wall? Uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. Look, I get all of that. But NFTs can still be very important because it's giving artists another avenue to earn money. Smaller artists now have more ways to sell their art, which can help people pay their bills and earn some extra cash. And that's very important, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Like, I'm not shaming anyone who gets into NFTs at all. Like, I get it. Sometimes it's all you can do as an artist. 
Also, there are ways to have more sustainably sourced NFTs. A blockchain called Tezos claims that it doesn't need as many computers to maintain the same network as Bitcoin or Ethereum. But people warn that newer sites might be a riskier place to do business. But even if we do get rid of all the NFTs, that's still not going to be enough to save the planet, right? That's the thing, it probably won't. Of all human activities, fossil fuel extraction is by far the largest contributor to the ongoing buildup of carbon in the Earth's biosphere. The International Energy Company reported that oil and gas alone comprised of 55% or like 18 billion tons of CO2 released into the atmosphere. Getting into NFTs would just be like a tiny percentage of what's really damaging the environment, but it is still better if you don't get into NFTs at all, if you're still worried about that. But like, NFTs will probably thrive anyway. Investors will still be interested and artists will be interested too because of how much you can make from it. And even with knowing the environmental impact, I can understand why artists might still want to keep selling NFTs because it can be a method of survival. <sighs> damned if you do, damned if you don't, huh? Yeah. Anyway, I've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> Clean this up before I'm in season, okay? Deuces. Move it towards the... All right. Oh, my hand <laughs> But that's just the appeal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. This is the hardest part. What the hell? Ah! But for struggling artists, it's a totally different ball game. Ball game. <laughs> the New York accent came out already. <laughs> 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 oh my god! <laughs> 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 Any percentage. And now I don't remember the line. <laughs> I feel another verb. <laughs> 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 go, go, uh, go that way. Go that way. No, it's like an internal burp. Okay. What the heck is an internal burp?